Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. The last lap of our conversations this morning, and I have two good news for you regarding sports. First things first, the Olympic Games has begun. Second, not too good news, Nigeria is not participating in the football event. But if you are interested in other games like basketball, definitely Nigeria is to watch out for. And to discuss more of this with us is Wally Scott, our sports correspondent. Good morning, Wally morning. Scott. All right, give us the gist about, first of all, the Olympic Games starting amid the COVID-19 scare. I think it's a, it's a bittersweet feeling for me. It's like drinking beer. Um, it, it's it's, it's really sad that um, the only opium we have in Nigeria is football and uh, we are the only African country in the world that's ever won a gold at the Olympics in football. And then due to bad structure and different um, fractions, um, infighting amongst our different bodies, it affects us directly or indirectly. We are not involved at the football events. All right, so let's let's talk about um, um, Nigeria's fate at the relationship we're, uh, at the Olympics, not relationship. Um, we are not going to be participating in, in football, which of course everyone normally is excited about. Um, basketball seems to be our only, you know, you know the the new you know opium that we have now. Do you think that we have any chance whatsoever to at least do well? How else do we do? Um... USA are the yardstick <clears throat> for basketball across the world. We played them last week or two weeks ago. We beat them. And um, don't forget that a large amount of um, our guys who are in the, the Tigers and the Tigress actually ply their trade in the U.S. And so they play with these guys week in, week out, day in, day out. And so um, they're not new to each other. So Nigeria's chances of actually bringing them, I didn't say gold though, but bringing the medal home, home is very Hopeful because, um, truth be said, um, these guys don't play here. None of them play here. They all play abroad. They all play with better structures, have um, exposure, know all these guys one on one. And so, um, yes, I think basketball, we do have chances to make it happen. Aside basketball, is there any other sport that we should be the other uh, sport looking, actually looking out for? Humors me. It tickles my fancy, really. I look at it and I laugh. Athletics. Now, Chioma and Juwa is the only person, female in athletics, who has won an individual gold at the Olympics. Good for her. We are really grateful to her. <clears throat> but look at the ones who have going there now. We had an African meet in Yabatek here. I was there. And our girls were clocking 10.16, 10.26 in the 100 meters. And we're looking at countries like America, like Jamaica, where the girls are looking to clock 9.05. 9.00 you know so i'm asking myself we are clocking 10.16 here and breaking record here in the african meets and girls there are breaking record with 9.02 seconds so we're going to go run against them what chances do we have none if you ask me like i said the olympics has never been my forte unfortunately i have always in different media houses i have worked in i have been lucky to have covered the Olympics at different times. But I've always honestly wanted to cover the Paralympics. They are the ones that make us proud. The Paralympians will stay at the National Stadium so really there, train with rusty barbells in weightlifting. When they finish, they will eat yam, rice, and beans with sachet water and still go there and bring home gold. How they do that, I have no idea. It's a miracle. But our guys here, the blessing of Kagbaris, live abroad. Practically everybody in this contingent, 58 of them, half of them, or more than half of them, apply trade abroad. And then they still go there and still make a mincemeat of the country. And then the Paralympians who don't, who have, this is their first time abroad. Though. It's such a water they're drinking. Though. They don't drink vitamins, so they don't drink supplements. So. It's yam, I've, I know many of them, when they, after training, it's yam, beans, and um, rice they eat. And they still go there and miraculously summon the Nigerian spirit and still come back home with gold. How they do that, I don't know. So, left to me, if you ask me, honest, as Wale, not as a sports presenter, I do not have any too much hope for this crop of people, except, like I said earlier, basketball. The athletics, the triathlon, the oh, weightlifting, table tennis. table tennis, I have no. I don't know how to win gold here. Well, Japan is the host country. 
Even when Japan wasn't hosting in ping pong, you can't take them out. It's all they have. Ping pongers, that's what they do. G Asian countries. And then Japan are the host countries, so they must have been ready before now. So forget gold for our country. China is still there. Arona Kordry has, 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 has played table tennis for Nigeria for, for, for like forever. For, ever. for like forever. So, you know, so, we, so how, how have we not been able to develop any other table ten tennis talent? Nobody is developing China? anything. Just like Genot Ro, our Super Eagles coach, he's convenient with you playing abroad. Whether it's Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Afghanistan, it doesn't matter. As far as you are abroad, come. You know, and nobody is looking inwards. Nobody is trying to work on the grassroots. It's either you play abroad or nobody. And that's why our whole team looks like a, a mixed European country. That's the truth. We have fantastic footballers here who just need to be groomed, exposed. That's all. But nobody is looking inwards. It's about you playing abroad. Try and get abroad, even if it's Egypt. I play for Nigeria. Whatever sports. Well, um, there's, there's more time to talk about Nigeria's um, uh, chances at the Olympics. Uh, but that's also, before we go look at the Olympics, you know, um, in general, uh, first one that has been, well, um, it, done in the pandemic, um, crowds are going to be less. There's still fears about, you know, infection and, and numbers rising. There would be, you know, serious testing going on across um, uh, the whole period. Uh, do you think it will, we will be able to have the same emotional connection to the Olympics this time as we've had in the past? The feel is gone already. The Olympic feel, the feeling of um, I'm Nigerian, I'm going to be an Australian for the first time, meet a Japanese, you know, coming together as a family, is gone. Because first off, the Japanese government has spent billions on this Olympics and they can't have spectators. It's that bad. Zero spectators. That's, that's taking the feel of it. Because the beauty of the Olympics is to bring people from different nations together. And that's gone because you can't have spectators, you know. And I won't feel comfortable if I was, walking, if I was watching the Olympics or any of the events in a pub in Tokyo or Hiroshima or wherever. It wouldn't be fun, you know. So that's gone. But that spectators is gone already. And then don't forget that um, there was a bubble that was built in the Games Village. 58 people tested positive. So health experts say the bubble has burst already. You know, so it, it's taking the shine off it. We are hearing of COVID-19 cases like every day. And the people are getting scared. Um, the um, U Ugandan theme almost left. Five of them almost, almost left because of coronavirus fears. People are, want to actually want to leave. Guys didn't come. Um, look at tennis, for example. Lawn tennis. Um, a whole lot of superstars, highly rated, seeded tennis players, have refused to come to the Olympics because of coronavirus fears. It's taking, for me, this is um, the most expensive Olympics, but the worst ever. Because the beauty of it, the joy of the Olympics, what it represents, see the rings, the rings of the Olympics. It represents different people coming together as one. And who, which people are coming there? It's just the athletes. And then the rest we have to rely on the TV. That takes a channel. Well, that's all for the best. Um, Wally Scott, thank you very much. Thank uh, you, we're thank completely you. out of time. Uh, thank thanks you. for stopping by. Thank you. Um, we will, of course, I'm um, sure you're going to be here at 9.30 uh, uh, yeah. to do further analysis. And over time, we'll have more conversations concerning the Olympics. Thank you. All right. Stay with us. Uh, we'll go on a short break when we come back. Um, well, final bits here on The Breakfast.